Welcome to Seoul, South Korea, a city that you have to see to believe. It's a city where old meets new and where fashion and shopping are world class and the food is on a whole other level. And in this video, we're checking out 50 things to do in this vibrant and diverse city. From popular tourist attractions to places off the beaten path, we've attempted to put together a list of things that should be on every traveler's bucket list when visiting Korea's capital city. With that said, let's get started. First, the Seoul City Bus Tour is an affordable and efficient way to see some of the best sights in the city. The bus makes stops at over 20 of Seoul's hottest attractions. It's a hop-on, hop-off bus, so you can customize the trip to see the things you're most interested in. However, I would definitely recommend checking out Tongin Market. One of the most unique markets in all of Seoul is called Tongin Market. What makes this one special is if you come at certain times, you can actually use these certain coins and then go around and fill your own little lunchbox up of different things. So if you see something that says Doshirak Cafe, you can get certain small portions with your lunchbox. Then you take it upstairs and you get to eat it all, which is a lot of fun. After all of that food, take a short walk to Gyeongbokgung Palace. Gyeongbokgum is one of five major royal palaces here in Seoul. And this is my favorite because it is the biggest. It's so incredible to see all this, the colors, the painting, the architecture, everything. And we're right in the middle of Seoul. Don't miss the changing of the guard ceremony, which takes place at 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. daily, except for on Tuesdays. Be sure to arrive early to get a good viewing spot. Take a trip to the pass as you get a glimpse of when the Su Munjang or Royal Guard stood watch over the entrance of the Gyeongbokgung Palace. While you're there, don't miss the chance to check out the newly renovated Gwanghamun Plaza. This public space holds various events, fountains, greenery, and statues of two important figures in Korean history. So right in the middle of the new Gwanghamun Square is a statue of this gentleman. This is the late, the great King Sejong, who is revered by Koreans for helping shape Korea to be what it is now. He's the one who invented the Korean writing system called Hangul. We can uh, actually go in here and check out more of his story in the Free Museum. So in this simple museum downstairs, you can find out all about why King Sejong is so famous here in Korea and is such an important figure in history. You can also find a little bit more about the creation of Hangul. However, this isn't a huge museum. It's only going to take you a few minutes to walk through, but it's worth checking out. You get to see some uh, Korean traditional things that you might not see elsewhere. So next up is a new experience that recently just opened. So right behind me, this is called Chungwa Day, also known as the Blue House. And this is the former presidential's palace that you can actually come and take a tour of and uh, see the inner workings of where the president used to do their uh, business. So previously, this has been closed off to the public for 74 years. But in the spring of 2022, the new Korean president took office and decided to open this up to the public and uh, move his location to yongsang -gu. So this is pretty cool. So this is the former president's actual office. So I guess where they would have uh, signed laws and done all their other presidential things. I guess considering like the, the Oval Office like in the White House back in the States. And tickets to Chungwa Day are free. You do need to register at the front entrance in order to get access though. Make sure to bring your passport or your foreign ID in order to get a wristband to enter. So when it comes to food, you are never far away from good food here in Seoul, South Korea. However, sometimes you're gonna have to go down some uh, a little off the beaten path to get some of the best food, and that's what I've done right now. I've come to one of my favorite places, which is here in Dongdaemun. This is the Dongdaemun Grilled Fish Place. All around us, they are serving amazing grilled fish. It's a little hard to find, but it's well worth the efforts. The price of the fish has increased after the pandemic, but you'll certainly leave satisfied. Grilled fish also goes well with an ice cold beer. And speaking of beer, you'll want to head to the Seoul next. So you can't experience the Korean culture without checking out all the Korean alcohols. The Seoul is a small museum that aims to educate the public on Korean traditional alcohols. The highlight is being able to sample various liquors while an expert tells you all about them. The name of this alcohol is Osan Makgeolli. It's made from city Osan. I was able to try five different types of Korean alcohols, including Makgeolli and Soju. Reservations are required, but are free and can be booked on neighbor.com. Book early to get the English sessions. That is a bite, y'all. Oof. That is warm. That is uh, much stronger, much more potent than what you get at the convenience store. That is for certain. Woo. All right, BTS Army, this is the place you will want to find yourself when you're in Seoul. This is the Hybe building. 
It's a very nondescript building. Doesn't look very exciting from the outside. However, on the inside, there is a really cool museum that you can check out. Unfortunately, we can't take video in there. So you have to check it out for yourself. Or you can just walk along and just try to see. Who knows, maybe you'll run into BTS on the streets of Seoul. So if you want to get up close and personal with BTS, you're going to want to come to one of the cafes that line the street right behind the high building. So when it's a special member's birthday, they always have all these different collectible souvenir uh, merchandise and coffee cup sleeves that you can go around and collect. But even when it's not near one of their seasons of their birthday, you can still come here and uh, check out some of these BTS themed cafes. All right, guys, so no trip to Seoul will be complete without experiencing the food culture. And I am at one of my favorite places on the entire planet, Guangzhou Market. So it is located in the Zhongno area, which is adjacent to so many different tourist attractions that you'll want to check out. However, Guangzhou Market is the place to be for all things yummy. Come here hungry, I know I have. Let's go eat. This is what Korea is all about. Let's check this out. You have all these friendly sellers here and all these hungry diners and they are just having some great meal. Wow, kamsamnida. Oh, it smells so good. Mmm. Oh, it's really chewy. Mmm. This sauce is a little spicy. After all of that food, why not try some traditional tea? Head to Osaluk 1979, located just outside Yongsan Station, for high tea in the afternoon. It's served with a variety of yummy snacks that incorporate different Korean flavors. Reservations are highly recommended. So next up we are checking out a brand new place that just opened recently. So this is called Hiker Ground, and it's located right across the street from the Cheonggyecheon. So each floor of this building is devoted to something different about Korea. It looks like this area is all about K-dramas and K-shows. So you can see different things about Squid Game, We Are All Dead, I think it was. So this particular area is devoted to medical wellness, and you can find out um, different things about the medical tourism industry. There's actually different experiences that you can do. You can do a stress test, you can do a skin analysis. But I went with a T type of experience. <laughs> For all of you K-pop fans out there, the second floor is the place to be. So this is like different sets that were actually used in different K-pop videos or replicas, I guess, rather, that you can go into and uh, make your own little K-pop video. So one of my favorite places to hang out with my four-legged friends here is this place. This is the Han River Park. Right behind me is the Han River. And what is really cool is that you can just hang out here with your puppies. You can order some food. I've got some pizza here. We grab some snacks and we just hang out. We're gonna catch the sunset. We get beautiful views of the city of Seoul. While on the Han River, be sure to take a cruise. These can be found in various places, including at Bampo Bridge, and gives guests the best way to see the city of Seoul. Go in the evening and catch the sunset, or go at night and get a front row view of the iconic Bampo Bridge Rainbow Fountain Show. Seoul is home to multiple Buddhist temples. This one is one of my favorites, this is Bongin Sa. And it's located right across the street from Coex. It's almost hard to believe we're in the middle of Gangnam, one of the busiest districts in all of Seoul. However, we have this whole sprawling compound full of Buddhist temples. This place also has amazing festivals during the springtime and throughout the year. You're definitely going to want to spend a little bit of time. It's quite serene and peaceful. And you get to just kind of sit back and reflect on your time in Seoul, South Korea. Before BTS or Blackpink, there was Psy with this infamous song, Gangnam Style. And right in front of Koex Mall, you can find the iconic sculpture of the hands that he used in the video, the little motion, little horse dance motion. You're gonna wanna come here and do a little dance just like everybody else. Don't be embarrassed, everybody does it. So the Starfield Coex Mall is the world's largest underground shopping mall. You can get just about everything in there. There's movie theaters, there is its own aquarium, there's all kinds of stuff in this place. You definitely want to come spend some time. And then this pavilion all around me actually turns into an ice skating rink during the winter time, which is pretty cool. You can find a lot of festivals and food trucks and other things throughout the year whenever you are here. 
surely you recognize the scene right behind me. This is the Starfield Coex Library. This little place behind me is so iconic. If you've ever seen an Instagram photo of Seoul, South Korea, you've probably seen this, you probably recognize it. There are books all the way up to the ceiling. I always wondered though, how do you get those books down? Hmm. Feeling hungry? Why not try some of Seoul's freshest seafood at Noryangjin Fish Market? Choose your seafood on the first floor and then head up to the second floor to have it prepared. Do know that you'll pay twice though, once for the sea creature and again after having it prepared. However, the price is worth it if you're a seafood fanatic. Speaking of seafood, the Uljiro Nogari Street is known for its lively environment, cheap draft beer and delicious dried fish. So this place is one of the best places to come for cheap beer and we just want a lively neighborhood with a lot of cheap alcohol. So it's basically well known for all these little plastic tables that people just sit outside and chill and drink ice cold beer and eat dried fish. There's no better way to spend a Saturday evening under the Seoul skies than with an ice cold beer and a whole dried fish. And no trip to Korea would be complete without visiting the iconic Namsan Seoul Tower. Head to the top on a clear day for beautiful views of the city. Namde Moon Market is Korea's largest and oldest traditional market. Go hungry and stop by Kaguksu Alley for a bowl of freshly made knife cut noodles. This food is filling, affordable, and comforting. In Sedong is one of those areas in Seoul that you will just automatically end up if you are visiting Seoul, South Korea. So it's full of these traditional souvenir shops, restaurants, tea houses, and more. What makes it so cool is that everything is written in Korean. When you're in In Sedong, make sure to stop by Samji Gil. So this is a four story place that has all kinds of different handmade arts and crafts and all kinds of fun things, cafes. It's a good place to get souvenirs and just a cool place to check out Korean traditional arts and crafts. and. Things like that. This is the Dong Cafe, or actually the Poo Cafe. Yeah, if you've ever wanted to uh, have a latte out of a toilet, this is the place to come. Everything here is poop themed. Hopefully, it doesn't taste like its namesake. Ooh, I'm proud to report that the rose latte actually tastes like roses and not like, well, something else. And if a poop cafe wasn't enough for you, how about some freshly baked poop bread filled with what else other than chocolate? Wait, is that really chocolate? <laughs> While you're in the Insadong area, be sure to check out the museum Kimchi Khan to find out more about Korea's most famous and representative food, kimchi. Find out the history and health benefits of the dish, and if you're lucky enough, you might even be able to make your very own kimchi. Looking for affordable clothing? Then head to the Express Bus Terminal's Underground Shopping Center. Bring cash and explore the variety of Korean fashion items just waiting to go back home with you. While that shopping, you might want to head to what is considered the prettiest Starbucks in Korea. One of the top seven prettiest Starbucks in the whole world, guys. This is at the Mill Station, just right around the corner from Express Bus Terminal. This is this beautiful dome-shaped roof here and some delicious signature drinks. Mm. It's a great place to pick up some souvenirs and just cool down on a hot summer's day. Fans of K-pop won't want to miss K-Star Road. Sculptures of teddy bears line this street, each one representing a different K-pop group. Some favorites include 4-Minute, Super Junior, 2PM, Shiny, Miss A, FT Island, and of course, BTS. Be sure to then head down the street to figure Museum W. Located in Apgujong, and it has thousands and thousands of different figures. Check these out. Looks like we have uh, Heath Ledger as the Joker. The detail on some of this is so incredible. I actually feel like I'm standing right next to a real person. Ooh. Lotte Tower is Korea's largest building and one of the tallest in the world. This tower is a symbol of Seoul and a day should be spent there checking out all the shopping, cafes, aquariums, and more. Be sure to go up to the observatory for great views of the city. If you're not too scared, you'll want to check out the glass floor. It's an experience every thrill seeker will never forget. 
So while you're at Lote Tower, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you also check out Lote World Adventures. So this is a huge amusement park. It's half indoors and half outdoors. There's lots of rides and there's all kinds of cute stuff. A lot of people like to rent school uniforms and walk around and take some cool pictures. Nestled in the shadows of Lote Tower is the Olympic Park. This is the site of the 1988 Summer Olympics and now it's a sprawling park with various sculptures, monuments, and other things that shouldn't be missed. It's especially beautiful in the spring and in fall. Want to see Seoul's most diverse neighborhood? Then head over to the Haebongchun area. The name literally translates to Freedom Village and is home to international cuisine, LGBTQ plus bars, and amazing rooftop cafes. Fans of Korean dramas, you are in luck because Haebongchun is the place to be. All right, so you're probably familiar with the Korean drama Taewon class. And for you true fans of it, you will know this place right behind me. So the real name of this place is Oriole. However, in the drama, it is called Danbam, and it is a central figure in the series. By now, you've certainly seen the Oscar-winning movie Parasite. See the filming locations for yourself in various parts of the city. Have fun recreating some of the iconic moments in the movie, and even see the actual pizza boxes the Kim family folded in the movie. A place most travel guides don't mention is the Doni Moon Museum Village. What I absolutely love about this area is that Everything is written in like the old school fonts and the old school signs. And you just kind of feel like you've been transported back to like the 1950s or something. So there's everything from uh, behind me is a, a photo studio, there's a barber shop, there's an old school movie theater right here, there are restaurants. There's a lot going on here. Then try various retro foods students ate, including Korean traditional lunch boxes called doshiraks. To see a whole day in Dorney Moon and my experience with this restaurant, watch the whole vlog that is linked in the description box below. Another iconic place that visitors always flock to is the Bukchan Hanuk Village. It's the perfect place for some great Instagram shots. So it won't come as a surprise to you to know that the Korean language is a huge part of Korean culture. But what you may not know is about this, this is the Korean alphabet, it's called Hangul, and it is a very scientific method of writing. And it's actually so unique to the Korean culture because it was formed in the 1400s by the great King Sejong. And it's so important to Koreans that there's actually a whole museum devoted to nothing but the writing system called Hangul. Now, you may be kind of wondering, is it hard to learn Hangul? Well, let me tell you, it has been said that the wise people can learn how to read it in only one day and even the unwise can learn how to read it in 10 days. So that's my challenge to you. Before you come to Korea, learn how to read Hangul. You simply can't leave Seoul without visiting the War Memorial of Korea. This beautiful museum is free of charge and deserves a few hours to fully explore. Parts of the museum are quite somber but is also educational and certain sections of it are also interactive. So when you're in Seoul, one thing you should definitely do is rent a hanbok, it's the Korean traditional clothing. There are places all around the traditional palaces you get to walk around like royalty. <laughs> it is a hot summer day and I've had to do a little bit of hiking to get up here at Naksan Park. But the view behind me is incredible and well worth checking out. I can see why this was in so many K-dramas. It's such a romantic and just cool place in the middle of Seoul City. So on the outside of Naksan Park, you'll find this. This is the Seoul Fortress Wall, and it was originally started to be built in the year 1396. And if you walk down this street, it'll take you all the way down to the Dongdae Moon area. And you'll get to see one of the iconic gates here in the center of Dongdae Moon. A trip to Yongma Land is an experience unlike any other. This abandoned theme park has been the filming location for many K-pop videos as well as dramas. Some say the grounds are haunted, so proceed only if you dare. For something less spooky, head over to the Bampo Bridge for the nightly Bampo Bridge Rainbow Fountain Show. The fountains are set to various songs and last for about 20 minutes. This happens to be a popular place for couples and you can often feel the romance in the air.
For all of you history buffs out there, Seoul is a place you must check out. There are five royal palaces here in the city, including this one. This is Dog Sugung, and you are not going to want to miss it. Check out all of Seoul's amazing museums, temples, palaces, and more next time you're in Seoul. Learn even more history at the National Palace Museum of Korea before heading to the Namsan Hanuk Village. Check out the various traditional Korean style housing and activities before heading over to the Seoul Millennium Time Capsule that was sealed in 1994 and will only be opened on November 29th, 2394. Finally, check out a Korean traditional drum class. The drums are also set to popular K-pop songs. In this lesson, we learned how to drum to the song Idol by BTS. Mic drop. <laughs>